I decided to do my project on the Japan tsunami from 2011, and while I am focusing on the tsunami itself, I do need to look at the earthquake that causes disaster. The tsunami took place on March 11, 2011, and a tidal wave of up to 55 meters in height killed 15,950 people and destroyed many large residential areas. The number of total deaths reached just below 20,000. Geologically, Japan is located on the Ring of Fire and, is, and the area is susceptible to earthquakes. In this case, a 9.1 magnitude undersea megathrust earthquake occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 72 kilometers east of the Oshika Peninsula in the Tohoku region. The break caused the seafloor to rise by several meters, and while the earthquake lasted six minutes, the tsunami lasted approximately two hours. Less than an hour after the, the earthquake, the first of many tsunami waves hit Japan's coastline, with some waves reaching six miles inland. Low temperatures and recent snowfall were major concerns after the earthquake. Due to the time of year, snow arrived minutes before or after the tsunami, depending on locations. The tsunami flooded a total of approximately 561 square kilometers in Japan. Residents had only 8 to 10 minutes of warning, and more than 100 evacuation sites were washed away. A report from 2015 indicated that 228,863 people were still living away from their home in either temporary housing or due to permanent re relocation. Many people who did not take advisory seriously were swept away, but the ones who did take the warning seriously had less casualties as they seeked for higher ground after the initial earthquakes. There were seawalls built, but because of the seafloor rising due to the break of the earthquake, the seawalls were now not the height that they were supposed to be. What could have helped prevent the tsunami coming over the seawall was to build higher walls to ensure that even if there was a break, the tsunami would not rise over the walls. Total damages were about 360 billion US dollars after both the earthquake and tsunami. The tsunami resulted in over 340,000 displaced people in the Tohoku region, and food shortages, water, shelter, medicine, and fuel for the survivors were needed. The Japanese Red Cross Red Cross reported that about $1 billion in donations from around the world were given. Japan's coastal cities and towns were littered with nearly 25 tons of debris. Today, there are still repairs being made, and in 2015, in Oregon, there was a boat discovered off the coast that was believed to have been swept away in the 2011 tsunami. I chose the disaster because I had taken an interest in tsunamis, and I remember the 2011 Japan disaster happening when I was in elementary school. A feature of this disaster that struck me in awe was the fact that the seawalls dropped due to the seafloor rising, causing more damage. After studying this disaster, I learned that an estimated 5 million tons of waste were reported by the Japanese Ministry of the Environment after the tsunami. Personally, I have never been in a natural disaster, and I hope to never be in one. But imagining being in this disaster after just surviving a high-magnitude earthquake and then 30 minutes later trying to flee and survive a deadly tsunami is unfathomable to me. I hope that if I was in this situation, I would take the warnings and advisory seriously and seek higher ground as fast as possible. After the disaster, the United, the United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction held its World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction in Tohoku in March 2015, which then produced the Sendai Framework Document. Its purpose was to guide efforts by international development agencies to act before disasters instead of reacting to them after the fact. What made the disaster far more worse was the number of people on the northeastern Japanese coastline not taking the warning seriously. After a 9.1 magnitude earthquake, especially in a region that is susceptible to tsunamis, more people should have been evacuated. A natural phenomenon becomes a disaster when people move to regions that can potentially harm them. I do hope that in the future there will be less, less casualties from natural disasters from new technology implemented to warn people in these areas.